Hey, what is up guys? MurrayMan4 here, back with another Minecraft video. And today, I will be showcasing a whole bunch of new features in the new Minecraft update 1.9, the combat update. Now, I have not done one of these in a long while, and that is because the last update, 1.8, came out a year and a half ago, which is crazy long ago. The, the length between updates just keeps getting longer and longer. But here we are, 1.9 is finally here, and it's got a whole whack of awesome new features that I'm going to show you today. So we're going to start off over here with uh, a couple of the smaller things. First off, oh dear. Uh, anyways, well, that shows you right in the bottom right-hand corner, there are subtitles now for the hard of hearing, which is pretty cool. I think I'm just going to leave it on for the rest of the video, just for the sake of showcasing. And they're also very useful if you just happen to not hear the sound, because sometimes something will sneak up on you and you have absolutely no idea it's there until it's too late. Anyways, what I have the snow golem here for is if you take some shears to a snow golem, you can actually remove its pumpkin head and you just have the snow head, which is pretty cool. You don't get the pumpkin back, but oh well, you've got yourself a pumpkinless snow golem. Next off here, we have an enchanted golden apple. Why? Because these things are sadly no longer craftable. They're still obtainable in survival, but you can't just plop a whole bunch of golden blocks into your crafting table anymore. You have to find them in uh, dungeons or strongholds or abandoned mine shafts, which is a sad thing, and it makes the achievement build a notch apple a lot more difficult. Next here, you'll see we have a hay block here, and that's because there is a small little change that means that it does less damage. So you see that drop only did half a heart to me. However, if I drop from the same height onto a non hay block, that did two hearts of damage to me. So if you want to make a uh, great drop and suffer a little bit less damage, hay blocks are great. Next, we've got some new boat changes. So as you can see, there are now different boats for every single type of uh, wood, which is pretty cool. And you'll also notice they have oars now. Uh, now that's not added into the crafting recipe. The crafting recipe is still the same. Just now you can build uh, a boat with the different wood types. And so, if we plop our boat in this big pool of water here, let's plop in. So, uh, the controls are still relatively the same. You uh, press the forward key to go forward. You turn using your left and right arrows and it's pretty darn cool. We've now got oars. Now, what's even cooler is if we spawn in a chicken, let's go forward. Yeah, okay. So, uh, I thought if you rammed into a mob, it could go into the boat, but apparently not. They have to actually walk onto it. But you can fit two entities onto a boat now. Uh, you can either have two mobs, but you can't apparently push the boat. Or you could have one player and your pet. So that's pretty cool. We have three new status effects in 1.9. Glowing, Levitation, and Luck slash Bad Luck. Now, Bad Luck isn't obtainable in Survival as far as I'm aware, but the rest are. Glowing is obtained through the new Spectral Arrow, which I'll get into a little bit later. So, Glowing gives you a, well, glowing outline. And so this outline appears on any entity that has the glowing effect to it, and it actually appears through blocks. I don't know how well I can demonstrate that. Yeah, there you go. You can see my legs through the block. And so that's more of a PvP feature so that you're able to, if you can hit the player with a spectral arrow, you're going to be able to find out where they're going. Next is Levitation, which you get from being attacked by the new mob, the Shulker, which, once again, we'll get into later. And so basically, it's just it makes you float up. No choice. You can't do a single thing about it. And so basically, if you're in survival, uh, this can do some real damage if you are really hit high into the air, you float really high into the air, and you come crashing down back to Earth. Now we've got both luck and bad luck. Basically what these do are increase or decrease your chances of getting good loot in chests. And essentially, you can get the luck from a new potion, but as far as I'm aware, you can't get a bad luck potion, and you wouldn't really want one anyways, so that's alright. Next, we have a few new game rules. The disable a movement, 
which makes sure that the server doesn't kick you for hacking if it thinks your lich is moving too quickly, even if it's not. Spectators generate chunks, which allows spectators in spectator mode to be able to generate new chunks, unsurprisingly. And then we have spawn radius, which determines how far away a mob is able to spawn from its so-called spawn point. Next we have two new enchantments. So, these enchantments are Mending and Frostwalker. So let's put on the Frostwalker, and what Frostwalker does is when you get near water, it will actually freeze it up for you, so you can now walk on water as much as you like. Now this quickly uh, disappears and turns back into normal water, so you don't have to worry about it ruining your ponds and stuff, uh, but it's pretty darn cool. Okay, so we've got this next one called Mending. So if we spawn in a whole bunch of chickens here, you'll notice this sword is slightly deteriorated. And when I attack these chickens, the experience isn't actually adding to my XP bar. Why? Because anything with the Mending enchantment that is either in your hotbar, your offhand, which is new to 1.9, or your armor slots, will actually gain experience and heal up. So the durability will keep increasing until it's full and then once that item is full uh, it can't be healed any longer then the XP will go to your XP bar so it's pretty darn cool we've also got a couple new statistics uh, sleep in bed which is the amount of time you slept in your bed uh, the amount of time you sneaked for uh, the amount of items you've picked up the amount of items you've dropped and the distance that you have traveled in the new elytra next we also have four new particle effects we have the sweep attack, which is new for when you attack mobs. We have the dragon breath, which we'll get into when we go to the end. You have the end rod, which we'll also get into when you go to the end. And we have damage indicators, which you probably saw when I attacked those chickens. Uh, so now, whenever you attack a mob, uh, if it does damage, it has those damage indicator hearts pop out. And if you're standing still, then when you attack, it does a sweep attack, which actually damages a whole bunch of mobs around you and the reason that was added is because there are a couple changes to swords so why don't I not creepers they will destroy me spiders if I go over here with a whole bunch of mobs and turn myself into survival you'll notice that if I try to attack a whole bunch of times right beside my hot bar there is something there that's filling up and that is the damage indicator. So when it's completely empty, it won't be doing too much damage. You have to wait until it's full, and then it can do a lot more damage. And so you see that sweep attack, that's actually giving a little bit of a knockback effect too. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and you actually cannot block with swords now either. So that sweep attack's knockback will really be helping you out if you don't have a shield. Okay, so here we are. One of the biggest things of this update dual wielding what dual wielding means is we now have a new slot called the offhand which you can see here and if you press by default the F key then you will have that item go into your second hand and so basically this is mainly for use if you have one item that can only do one kind of thing for example a pickaxe only uses left click and the torch only really uses right click so you can use both of them in conjunction with the other uh, so you can be mining, you can be mining, you can place down your torches by right-clicking, and I'm in creative, but that's all right, and you can just just mine with your left uh, mouse button, and that is pretty darn cool. Now, another thing is, for example, the bow and the sword, since you cannot block with a sword now, if you have a bow in your offhand, you can fire, attack, fire, attack, fire, attack, which is also pretty cool. And... Finally, uh, one of the other really cool things is there are a whole bunch of new types of arrows in this, but whatever arrows you have in your offhand will take priority over ones elsewhere in your inventory. So if you want to have them fire in a specific order, you want to put the ones uh, you want to fire first in your offhand. So these are the new arrow types that I mentioned. There is one type of arrow for every potion type. So basically, how these work is you shoot them, and when they hit a mob, they give that mob that effect. So, uh, you can craft spectral arrows by putting an arrow 
in the middle and four glowstone dust surrounding it that'll give you two spectral arrows and you can get eight arrows of whichever type of potion effect you want by surrounding a new lingering potion with arrows and so we'll get into the lingering potion very soon and so all of these work just like regular arrows you shoot them and then when they hit a mob you get that effect so hopefully I won't kill this chicken but if you put this in the offhand Potion of Healing? Nope. But you saw that he got the effect, which is pretty darn cool. Next here's another one of the biggest things in the update. We have shields. So you can craft a shield by putting an iron ingot here and a whole bunch of oak wood planks, like so, or any type of wood planks, and you will get your shield. But in addition to just being a regular bland old shield, if you get a banner, if you combine that banner with a shield, you can then have your design on the shield so you can customize your shields however you like it's really really cool and so these are designed to be used in conjunction with swords now so that instead of blocking with a sword you are attacking with your sword and then blocking with a shield attack and block attack and block attack and block so that's really quite cool and it will take most of the damage from uh, long range weaponry like arrows which is really really neat and it's all around a very useful item. Next we have a new type of food. We have beets, which like other types of crops can be found in villages. So uh, you've got the beetroot and the beetroot seeds and you can also craft beetroot soup by putting six beetroots and a bowl into your crafting grid. And so the beetroot, let's find out how much it heals in hunger because I am very hungry in survival. Not as hungry as I thought I was, but alright. That didn't really heal anything. Okay, what about beetroot soup? Yeah, there we go. That healed up. That healed up nicely. You're probably also wondering, what the hey is this? This is the new grass path block. This isn't one you can craft, uh, and it's not one that you can naturally get in survival. The only way to actually get this block into your inventory and place it down is in creative. However, all you need to do to get it in survival is take a shovel and right click on grass boom you've got yourself a grass path next we have a new type of horse called the skeleton trap horse now these only spawn during thunderstorms and there is no way to differentiate them from any other type of horse but basically what happens is is once you get within a certain range of them uh, lightning will strike them won't damage any blocks around them won't cause any fire but then they'll turn into uh, skeleton horses with skeleton riders and so these can be quite deadly if you're not careful and as I said there's no way of telling if they are a skeleton trap horse or not hence the trap in the name so it looks like any other normal horse but if you get close enough boom a whole four of them will spawn so every time four of them spawn so it's not just one and it can be quite a challenge however if you don't run into it, I think within 15 minutes after they spawn, then they simply despawn, and you're fine. Alright, now we have some new command block stuff for all you redstone people out there. We've got three command block types. You've got uh, Impulse, which is just the regular old command block. You have Chain, which uh, can only be used in a, well, unsurprisingly a chain, and Repeat, which will repeat the command. So, this is the Impulse, just regular, the Chain. Uh, which does not work without another command block going before it, and repeat, which just repeats. You can just see it going real, real quick. So you all know how the regular command block works, so we're just going to skip over that. But here's the chain command block. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And so when I flip this, you'll notice it says one, two, four, five, because in order for a chain command block to activate it must have redstone or what's really cool is you can actually set it to be always active which means it does not require redstone and now three will pop up as well but basically this is a way for instantly carrying out commands because you can just have a whole bunch of these chain ones even if none of these are active this last one here will activate every time and so it will always activate the first command block, which has to be a regular or repeat command block, I believe. Then it will activate the first chain command block, no matter what. 
uh, but you can just have a really long line of these and not have to have a whole bunch of redstone repeaters and stuff and just have one activated at the end just have it always active and boom simple as pie and yeah that's really really cool next we have the repeat which I've already kind of demonstrated but here you go whole bunch of pumpkin pie that's it finally with the new command block stuff we have unconditional and conditional so unconditional is just a regular everyday command block but conditional means that there has to be a command block before it that has successfully uh, done its command so because there's not a full command here uh, you'll notice that it won't successfully do anything and so this one won't do anything either however if I actually make it an actual command and run it and it succeeds this one will now succeed as well and if I just make it fail again this one will fail again so it's pretty cool it adds in some new conditions and you can do a ton more with command blocks now alright before we get into the end there's a couple more things that we need to cover one of them is lingering potions so there's a new thing called dragon's breath that you can collect in the end from the ender dragon uh, it has the whole ender dragon fight has been revamped and so it has this new attack where it breathes out dragon's breath which is poisonous to you but you can collect it with a glass bottle and when you do you have this bottle of dragon's breath if you put it into the brewing stand and you put in your potion of whatever you wish once you activate the brewing stand the brewing stands need to be activated now with blaze powder you will get your lingering potion and so as i've already covered these lingering potions can be used to get arrows uh, that have effects on them but they can also be used to just you throw them and they're like a splash potion except the effects stay around so we've got our lingering potion now and if we throw it you'll notice that we've got this whole area now that's covered with it and if you're in that area you are going to get that effect and so unfortunately it doesn't stay too too long but it's still pretty cool and if you have a whole bunch of lingering potions throwing you can cover a whole area uh, and that whole area anything that goes in there will have that effect now this next one this is a feature I have been waiting to be added into Minecraft since I started playing the game four years ago ender crystals are now craftable which means you can access them in well creative or in survival and I've always wanted to be able to place down my own ender crystals and stuff because these blocks are just so cool and they play a much more important role than just decoration but anyways you can craft them now by having an eye of ender in the middle a gas tier at the bottom and surrounding that with glass and you get your end crystal I'm so happy that these things can be crafted now but you better watch out because when you try to destroy them they do explode like they do in the end uh, and also as a side note they can only be placed on bedrock or obsidian all right, let's go in the end. Okay, so here we go. Now, you may be like, okay, where's the Ender Dragon? Oh, you've already defeated him, but that is all right. You can now respawn the Ender Dragon a whole bunch of times. So now I can show you the revamped Ender Dragon fight. All you gotta do is put four end crystals at the corners of the portal and all the crystals around this will start to rebuild and once they are all done then you get your ender dragon here he comes okay so basically some of these towers uh, now have cages over top of the end crystals which makes them a lot more difficult to destroy you're going to have to climb all the way to the top of the tower to destroy them. So you better bring a whole bunch of ladders. And you'll also notice that they are now not randomly pla placed. Uh, all the towers are surrounding the end area in the middle, that, which is actually, the end portal is actually now built there automatically instead of you having to kill the ender dragon first. And the ender dragon will keep respawning there, uh, keep going back there, and he will only die over this spot. Now, you can kill him when he's not in this spot, but he won't die until he flies back over here.
So, once he gets over top of this here, you can only attack him with melee attacks, which makes this a lot more difficult in survival, because he will start breathing Dragon's Breath, and that can do a lot of damage. Ah, there's some Dragon's Breath right there. So if we go over there, we can collect a bottle of it, and we can use that for Lingering Potions. There we go. Now she's dead. Well, uh, every time you destroy the Ender Dragon, you will automatically get a new type of portal. Not just your exit portal, back to the overworld. Oh no. You have these new types of portals. Which are portals to the rest of the end. That's right, this isn't the only bit of the end anymore. You've got a whole bunch more to explore now with uh, some new mobs, a whole bunch of new blocks, a whole bunch of new items, and structures too. So you can only get inside these portals by using an end pearl, which, by the way, you can now throw in creative. And they also have a recharge now, which is kind of disappointing. But, yeah, it's really neat. You have all these end islands that just stretch on infinitely. And you'll notice these strange, weird plants, which we will get into in a minute. Alright, here we go. This is an end city dungeon. Now this is one of the larger ones. You can have some pretty small ones. Uh, and this one also has an end ship, which does not come with every end city dungeon. But this is pretty cool. We've got a whole bunch of new blocks that it's made out of. Uh, it's got a ton of loot, and we've got a new mob in here as well. And so you can just find these scattered throughout these islands, and they're really, really great. But first, let's get into the new everything. First off, we have these new plants, which are called chorus plants. They're kind of like cacti in the way that if you destroy the bottom one, uh, the entire thing will get destroyed. And you, you will get all of these chorus fruits. And, and that ender pearl was left over from before, apparently. Uh, if you're able to get a chorus flower, I believe you need silk touch for that. Then you're able to bring it back home and plant it. These can only be planted on end stone, but that's alright. And then you can grow your own. You can actually cook the coarse fruit to make popped coarse fruit. And this popped coarse fruit can be used in some crafting. Uh, and this, uh, as you might expect from fruit, you can eat it. Not the popped, but the regular. And when you eat it, it'll actually teleport you a few blocks either way. And now that I'm in survival, these new mobs, the shulkers, are attacking me. And you're witnessing the levitation effect in action. I'm gonna fall! Nope, C. You're in game mode C. So now we have a whole bunch of new blocks. We've got endstone bricks, which are crafted with four endstone. We have purple blocks, which are crafted with four popped chorus fruits. You get purple slabs from purple blocks in this fashion. Purple pillars with these purple slabs. And purple stairs, like so. And we also have a new block called the end rod, which is crafted with a blaze rod and a popped chorus fruit. And these end rods are real thin, they emit light, but they can also be placed horizontally as well. Pretty cool design feature. And they've got these little particles here, which are really neat. So you've seen these shulker creatures, they look like blocks, but if you're in survival, they pop open, and they've got a little face in there. And then they shoot you. And you float really high up, and there's every possibility that you will die. Not just from their attacks, but from falling to your death. Anyways, if we go in here, we can work our way up, see what kind of loot we can find, and yeah. As you might expect, this is incredibly difficult to traverse in survival, which is why it's recommended you have a whole bunch of stuff already before you attempt to do this. Well, I'm not quite sure what's up. There's supposed to be chests that have some real good loot, but I don't know why they're not appearing anywhere. Uh, but I promise you, if you can find chests in this uh, this place, it's got some good stuff. I mean, good, good stuff. Anyways, let's move over to the end ship, which also has some real good stuff. So if you're able to get out to the front here, you get yourself a dragon head, which not only can you wear and look awesome, when you walk, its mouth opens up and down, and if you have it placed, when you put redstone behind it, the mouth moves up and down. And it's pretty big too, but pretty neat looking. You also get yourself some free potions of healing and a brewing stand. And down here, protected by a shulker, is the real prize. You've got some gold, 
a diamond sword with mending. And you have all this stuff. You have a whole bunch of beetroots, diamonds, a diamond pickaxe with all those enchantments, an iron shovel with that en those enchantments, uh, the diamond helmet with that enchantment. It's crazy. And then you have the elytra, the elytra, whatever you want to call it. This is something else that's huge in this update. It is so darn cool. And it's the last thing I'm going to show you guys. So, if we put it on, this is so neat. All right, here we go. Boom! You can fly in Minecraft in survival now with the Elytra. All you have to do is drop off an edge, a couple of blocks. There's another end city dungeon just a few bits away. Oh, cool. I did not know that. Anyways, so you can drop off an edge just for a couple of blocks and you press space again and your Elytra will open up and you can fly. And it is so, so cool. Uh, unfortunately, you can't fly up. If you try to pull up, you'll just start to flail and you'll drop. But you can dive bomb down. Uh, you got to be careful though, because if you hit a wall or a floor or something, and you're going real fast, you can very easily die. But this thing is so neat. I mean, seriously. We have so much stuff that's been added in this update. So many cool new features. Uh, this is probably my favorite update in a really long time. Uh, and yeah. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, uh, and I hope this helped you out. If you did, a like and a subscribe is greatly appreciated. Uh, and Mercury 4, over and out. See you guys later.